All right, guys, so Hillary Clinton is on the campaign trail, right? And uh, she's using this Ukraine crisis as a way to uh, become relevant again, okay? Because Hillary, you know, I I've covered this. She has been trying to get back in politics. I, I believe that she sees the failure of the Biden administration and Kamala Harris, more specifically, as an opportunity to potentially run again in 2024, right? So she's licking her chops to get back in the media and to give her opinion on what is going on right now with this UK crisis. And you guys should not be surprised that um, she is pointing the fingers at Trump for what is going on. And I want to break that down because it is absolutely ridiculous to be quite honest with you. And I'm gonna tell you guys, in this video right here, uh, I'm gonna keep it all the way 100. I mean, I keep it all the way 100 in all my videos, but I'm really, really, really uh gonna talk about stuff that you're just not gonna hear in the american media because they don't really want to talk about this stuff but before we get in that uh, i just want to let you guys know if you like my commentary and you want to support my channel feel free to do so by using the links in the description below you can support the patreon you support the paypal you support the merch there are multiple ways to support if you would like to do so uh including uh getting yourself one of uh, these signature mugs i have on my website uh that defines the 2022 definition of race says which is anybody who disagrees with the democrat party right so if you want to get one of these racist mugs feel free to do so uh at the uh website so uh without further ado let's actually go ahead and get into this video of hillary clinton uh blaming trump and giving biden a pass for what is going on in ukraine take a look news are there, members of congress are, are there newsletters or whether it's members yeah. of yeah. congress how has this happened <clears throat> right well, I think it's happened because uh, starting with the ascent of uh, Trump, uh, there has been, sadly, uh, a, a total loss of uh, spine and conscience among too many Republicans who uh, at first saw no harm in uh, echoing and parroting the kind of crazy stuff that Trump would say totally against history, against common sense, uh, as you know so well. Uh, and now they're kind of caught in a bit of a, a downward spiral where they're afraid to stand against even the most outrageous uh, comments. There's also another element, which is these people are naive in such a dangerous way. They somehow believe that because Putin presents himself as a strong leader uh, on behalf of certain values that uh, are, you know, anti gay, uh, that are anti, you know, freedom and democracy that's so messy, that somehow, you know, that co corresponds with uh, the views of certain members and elements of the Republican Party. They could not be more mistaken. You know, this man is uh, not, uh, you know, he, he takes no prisoners. He kills them, he poisons them, he imprisons them, whatever. Uh, and I think the naive naivete uh, that we saw starting with Trump, but which has now been accelerated uh, is really hard to understand, Joe. But nevertheless, we have to deal with it mm -hmm. and we have to call it out. And more people in the press uh, and in politics need to be doing that. And, and, and for those who are watching who don't quite follow that logic uh, about uh, a certain element of the far right and Vladimir Putin, Mika, the same thing has been happening with Hungary, uh, where where these certain element of the Trump right are, are bowing down to a guy who Embracing. is celebrating the collapse of Western democracy, of liberal democracy in Orban. <laughs> bro, you got to love these Democrats, bro. You got to love these liberals, right? They've all got behind this like this idea that people on the right love Putin. Because he's a white man, he's anti-gay, right? <laughs> he's an authoritarian, okay? That, that, that is what they're saying, right? They're, they're literally all saying the same thing, right? <laughs> People on the right love Putin because he's a bigot, okay? That, that's what they're saying. Again, it, it's, it's so just ridiculous and so lazy, right, intellectually when they say this stuff. They, they literally can't analyze anything outside of the lens of race right these people are actively using critical race theory right in their politics again that's why it's so toxic man it really is okay uh so let's actually break down what hillary is doing here right she's playing the blame game she's trying to blame trump and say well you know it started with the ascension of trump 
Okay, as if what has been going on in Ukraine and Russia hasn't been going on literally for decades. And we're going to get more into that, right, in terms of how uh, the previous administration before Trump uh, actually, you know, you can make the argument uh, it's kind of responsible for a lot of this as well, too. But uh, let's stick with this current administration and Trump. Well, listen, Trump, okay, um, he's not in office right now. Biden's in office, right? And if Trump was enabling Putin so much, then why didn't Putin do this under Trump, right? Again, none of these people can answer that question. They keep blaming Trump and saying that Trump and Putin are butt buddies, right? Basically saying they're sleeping together. But Putin didn't do this under Trump. He did it under Biden. Why is that, right? Why is that? None of them have an answer for that, right? None of them have an answer, but, but somehow it's, it's Trump's fault, right? Again, it, it's the same thing they did with Afghanistan. When they try to blame Trump for the withdrawal, when no, 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 Biden was overseeing the withdrawal. He was president doing the withdrawal. He gave the orders to go through with it, right? He gave the orders. He conducted that. Trump's not even in office. Oh, it's Trump's fault. As if Biden had to go through with the withdrawal. He didn't have to. He could have not done it, right? But see, again, they do this as a way to deflect from the real culprits, right? From the people that are actually responsible for this Russian aggression towards Ukraine, right? Uh, because there's been arguments that uh, what happened under the Obama administration is actually what's to blame, right? Okay, take away, uh, you know, the historical context of NATO essentially trying to make other countries, uh, NATO countries in Eastern Europe, uh, which pissed Russia off. But under the Obama administration, when Joe Biden was vice president, Okay, uh, Hillary served as Secretary of State from uh, 2009 to 2013. Uh, Obama oversaw uh, Putin grabbing Crimea, right, during the Ukrainian uh, Revolution. Okay, that happened on Obama's watch. Okay, and there's an argument to be made that because of the West policy towards Ukraine, right, in which the West played a role in making Ukraine actively anti Russian, uh, this kind of led to this situation. And this is the exact argument that Chicago professor John Mishower made back in 2015 during a lecture. Take a look. What's going on here is that the West is leading Ukraine down the primrose path. And the end result is that Ukraine is going to get wrecked. And I believe that the policy that I'm advocating, which is neutralizing Ukraine and then building it up economically and getting it out of the competition between Russia on one side and NATO on the other side is the best thing that could happen to the Ukrainians. What we're doing is encouraging the Ukrainians to play tough with the Russians. We're encouraging the Ukrainians to think that they will ultimately become part of the West because we will ultimately defeat Putin and we will ultimately get our way. Time is on our side. And of course, the Ukrainians are playing along with this. And the Ukrainians are almost completely unwilling to compromise with the Russians and instead want to pursue a hardline policy. Well, as I said to you before, if they do that, the end result is that their country is going to be wrecked. And what we're doing is, in effect, encouraging that outcome. I think it would make much more sense for us to, neutral, to, to work to create a neutral Ukraine. It would be in our interest to bury this crisis as quickly as possible. It certainly would be in Russia's interest to do so. And most importantly, it would be in Ukraine's interest to put an end to the crisis. Now, that was back in 2015. 2015. This man sounds like a prophet, okay? A prophet. He knew what he was talking about, right? And what he was referring to was the West's policy towards Ukraine, okay, in, in which, you know, Putin alleges that the reason why he grabbed Crimea is because, again, this is an allegation from Putin, okay? Putin is saying this, okay? If you say this in America, they're going to say you're repeating Kremlin talking points, right? But Putin says that the U.S., uh, led by Obama, the Obama State Department, and Vice President Joe Biden, the same guy <laughs> that's the President of the United States right now, okay, conducted a coup in Ukraine back in 2014, right, during the Ukrainian Revolution, okay? They ousted the uh, neutral to pro-Russian uh, president at the time, democratically elected president, uh, in favor of installing a U.S.-backed 
slash West friendly leader. Okay, that's what they did. Okay, that's what Putin alleges. Right now, again, they say that this is, you know, Kremlin talking points. However, there is audio transcripts out there of a phone call between uh, the Assistant Secretary of State, uh, Victoria Newland, and U.S. Ambassador to Ukraine, uh, Jeffrey Pryatt, which is on YouTube, right? I can actually, I'll put the link in the description, okay? Uh, that basically describes how the U.S., at the very least, at the very least, uh, was playing a more active role in uh, installing a U.S. slash West friendly government in Ukraine and getting rid of the uh, pro-Russia to neutral uh, president that was already there, okay? I'm just saying, uh, these transcripts out here, again, if you say this, you know, in America, they say, oh, no, no, this is Kremlin talking points, but <laughs> this is the BBC, and that's why I think people got to understand that if you really want to know what's going on in the world, you got to look at international news because you're not going to get it from the American news, okay? And there's also videos out there of John McCain in Ukraine actively campaigning and supporting the opposition to uh, the Russian-backed slash Russian-friendly uh, leader in Ukraine back in like 2013, 2014, okay? I want you guys to imagine what would happen in the U.S. How would the Democrat Party react if there was actively a Russian politician, right? Somebody that was in a Russian government in the United States campaigning for a Republican candidate for president. We already know how they would react, right? We already know. I mean, that's basically what Russiagate was, right? Except Russiagate wasn't really true, right? I'm just saying. I'm just saying. What, what do you call that, right? What do you call that? So I'm going to read some of the interpretations of this conversation because the conversation in and of itself is too long to actually read. So good thing is, is that the BBC had a guy basically summarize what the conversation is about. And I'm going to read that for you guys so that you guys kind of can understand what's going on here. Okay. So according to Jonathan Marcus, the U.S. says that it's working with all sides in the crisis to reach a peaceful solution, noting that ultimately it is up to the Ukrainian people to decide their future. However, this transcript suggests that the U.S. has very clear ideas about what the outcome should be and is striving to achieve these goals. Russian spokesmen have insisted that the U.S. is meddling in Ukrainians' affairs. No more than Moscow, the cynic might say, but Washington clearly has its own game plan. The clear... Uh, purpose in leaking this conversation is to embarrass Washington and for audiences uh, susceptible to Moscow's message to portray the U.S. as interfering in uh, Ukraine's domestic affairs. Okay, so this audio was leaked by Russia. Okay, it's proof that, hey, look, the U.S. was meddling in Ukraine, right? So I just want y'all to keep that in mind, but I'm trying to tell all sides of the story here, okay? While Hillary is trying to blame Trump when all this stuff happened under Obama, okay? An intriguing insight into the foreign policy process with work going on at a number of levels. Various officials attempted to marshal the Ukrainian opposition efforts to get the UN to play an active role in bolstering a deal. And as you can see below, the big guns waiting in the wings. U.S. Vice President Joe Biden clearly being lined up to give private words of encouragement at the appropriate moment. Not the first time in an international crisis, the U.S. expresses frustration at the EU's efforts. Washington and Brussels have not been completely in step during the Ukraine crisis. The EU is divided and, to some extent, hesitant about picking a fight with Moscow. It certainly cannot win a short-term battle for Ukraine's affections with uh, Moscow. It does uh, not have the cash inducements available. The EU has sought to play a longer game, banking on its attraction over time, but the U.S. clearly is determined to take a more, a much more activist role. Overall, this is a damaging episode between Washington and Moscow. Nobody really emerges with any credit. The U.S. is clearly much more involved in trying to broker a deal in Ukraine than it publicly lets on. This is some embarrassment, too, for the Americans, given the ease in which their communications were hacked. But is the interception and leaking of communications really the way Russia wants to conduct its foreign policy? And then he goes on to talk about, like, uh, waking leaks and why would Russia do something like this, right? So, essentially, a summary of this conversation Okay, essentially is that, hey, during this phone conversation, these two people were actively discussing uh, the role that the U.S. was playing in trying to get uh, a leader that's friendly to the West installed in Ukraine. Okay, and don't get me wrong. The guy that was in office <laughs> right before uh, the revolution, he was a bad guy. Okay, he was not a good guy. Okay, he was shooting at his own citizens. 
look, here's the thing. Uh, I'm just saying, Russia was trying to, you know, do some funny business. The U.S. allegedly was trying to do some funny business as well. Okay, let's keep it 100 here. And again, just so you guys know, I'm not BSing here. Uh, this is a transcript of the call. It's available on YouTube if you want to listen to it. Uh, in which uh, Newland, again, who is the Secretary of State, Assistant Secretary of State, whatever, uh, says, I think Yacht, okay, which is this guy right here. Okay, that's what you're talking about. The guy that ultimately became Prime Minister of Ukraine. Okay, she says, I think Yachts is the guy who's got the economic experience, the government experience. He's the what he needs is uh, Clinch and uh, Taya Buck on the outside. He needs to be talking to them four times a week. You know, I just think it's Klitsch going in. He's going to be at the level working for uh, Yaniskich. It's just not going to work. And then Pratt says, this is the ambassador to ukraine he says yeah no i think that's right okay good do you want us to set up a call with him as the next steps she says my understanding from that call but you tell me was that the big three were going into their meeting and that yachts was going to offer in that context a three plus one conversation or a three plus two with you is that not how you understood it okay so basically in a nutshell right um they're basically picking their guy okay and again, their guy <laughs> just so happened to became prime minister. Okay, so again, is that a coup? That's up to you to decide, right? But at the very least, it suggests that, hey, you know, while, you know, we complain about, oh, Russian election interference over here in the U.S., uh, it seems like we may have been doing our own interference abroad, okay? But I'm just saying, Hillary... Leaves out all these facts, right? She she blames Trump when none of this happened under Trump. And what actually set off Putin, at least according to him, okay, to take Crimea happened under Obama, right? That happened under the Obama administration, right? And that professor also made the argument that, again, some of these policies, right, from the U.S. and the West, right, again, led by Obama, people like Hillary Clinton, Joe Biden, led to ukraine getting wrecked right according to that professor again i'm just sharing all arguments here okay that's what i'm doing right and it, i find it fascinating how nobody's pointing the finger at obama and saying wait wait wait, what happened on obama and putin taking crimea we got to talk about that right why is obama not taking more blame for what's happening right now okay the focus is on Biden, you know, and Trump or whatever. But I'm like, no, no, this happened on Obama. I mean, it happened on the Biden too, <laughs> technically, because he was vice president. But I'm just saying, that is what happened. Okay. So, look, all I'm saying is this. Uh, this is the, the, the nitty gritty stuff that, you know, happens that the mainstream liberal media, they're not going to talk about. It. They're not going to tell you about it. Right. But when you want to talk about, well, who's responsible for this, who's at fault, yeah, you got to look at what happened in Ukraine during the Ukrainian revolution and understand that, hey, you know, Putin thinks, he believes that the West installed a government, right, that essentially was working against his interests right at the man's doorstep. Again, that's not an excuse for him to invade, but with that argument that, hey, these people conducted a coup on my doorstep, you can kind of see why he took the acts that he took. Again, why they're all blaming Trump, a lot of this stuff happened under the Democrats, right? Obama and Biden. And I'll argue that ultimately Trump kept Putin from taking this action sooner, right? That's what I'll argue, okay? So let me know what you guys think. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Most importantly, share a black conservative perspective. Peace.